right, everybody, we are ready to go with our second to last talk. It is Wilder from Parallelly Policy is going to be talking to us about opting out of the system, which was um, which was the theme last year. But it's still it's still relevant this year just because the theme of C3 changes doesn't mean that our needs as humans change. Now, I want to point out one thing before I hand over the microphone. I don't know if you can see the bottom half of this screen, but there is 54 likes on this public presentation. Um, there are 54 people just like yourselves that think this presentation is worth listening to and is really good. So um, that's how we know uh, it is 100% it is pr approved by 54 people. So I'm going to pass this over to Wilder. and He's going to talk with us about opting out of the system, achieving blah, 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 using blah, 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 blah. Here you go. OK. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. This is like a last minute presentation. I'm really happy that you are here. Only a few people are sitting here, so I would appreciate if this presentation can be like a interactive. So if you have any question, anything, just raise your hand, stop me, and I will be happy to answer to your questions. So, so uh, the name of my presentation is how to achieve both economic and personal freedom using globality and, and flexibility. Firstly, I would like to introduce myself. So. I'm a crypto anarchist, which means that I strongly believe that crypto technology can help us to achieve uh, more personal and economic freedom. Uh, my technical background, I'm a computer hacker, so I have two um, ethical hacking companies, IT security companies. We do, we do um, like ethical hacking, especially in Central Europe. I'm also the co-founder of multiple hacker spaces in Prague, also in Bratislava, maybe you know the Prague Police. Uh, which is quite pretty unique in Prague, Bratislava, uh, uh, Vienna, and now also in Barcelona. I'm also the member of one Czech contemporary art artistic group and responsible for many anti-government and digital privacy projects. But what is the most important is, uh, is that I'm like a perpetual traveler. So I spent the last five years just traveling, moving all the time. And and I, because I'm geek, I I was thinking how to achieve most freedom uh, in my lifestyle. Okay, I would like to start this optimistic Hans Christian Andersen quote, just living, living is not enough. One must have sunshine, freedom, and a little flower. So um, if you want to have more freedom in your life, or in your society, you have multiple options. So let's describe this option. The first option is the traditional one, Vote every four years with a weight of your vote less than one to two mil uh, million, which is the case of Slovakia and most countries in uh, in Europe Union. So this is like a traditional option. The second option is just to be activists, organize many anti-corruption demonstration, organize, uh, create petition for the better governments, and try to improve your government. Uh, the third option, probably very unpopular is just to become the politician and try to change your system from inside. And the last option, how, how, what, what you can do, and this is exactly what my presentation will be about, is how to opt out of the system and just don't wait for any approval from democratic masses. Be global, be flexible, grasp the current crypto technology, and all legislation loopholes or legislation possibilities and be free just now. So this is the uh, topic of my presentation. I'm going to explain you how uh, to choose a suitable country for your permanent residency, how to choose suitable country for a company, uh, why it's really important to eliminate center of your interest in your home country, so it means that you have to divorce, you have to sell your properties, become homeless. Why it's necessary to close you, all your bank accounts, switch to crypto completely, especially to truly anonymous cryptocurrencies like Monero, for example. How uh, you should choose global healthcare uh, insurance uh, provider. How to how to choose the world mobile oper um, operator. How to embrace sharing economy and use use it in every country and also the last thing how to help all your friends to opt out of the system like you and move to parallel society okay so uh, let's start with the first point so the question is why we should change our permanent residency 
So I'm going to describe your situation in uh, my situation. Uh, like I'm a Slovak citizen and I had my residency, permanent residency in Slovakia. And it was definitely not a good idea because of, m because of the following reason. The first thing is that because of my mandatory permanent residency, I have, I have mandatory military service. Despite the fact that Slovakia, also Germany, is the member of NATO, in case of any military conflict, for example, someone decides to at attack uh, um, Germany or Slovakia, you have to go to the army just because you have permanent residence in Germany or you have permanent residence in Slovakia. Another thing is that uh, if you are if you are a um, permanent resident of Germany, you have to choose from the oligopoly of few companies, a few uh, health care insurance companies, just just German companies. When you opt out, when you decide to give up your permanent residency in Germany, you can choose from the global market of multiple healthcare, um, healthcare, global healthcare providers. Also, tax residency. Uh, the thing is that if you don't, if you travel a lot, like me, for example, and you don't stay in any country more than 180, uh, more 183 days, which is more than half a year, it doesn't make sense to have any permanent residency or tax residency just because you have obligation to pay taxes and you don't legally you don't need to pay any taxes if you don't stay in any country more than half a year okay another thing is that if you have tax residency for example in germany or slovakia you have to tax all your income including your your crypto income so for example you you, you are a hodler you have a lot of bitcoins a lot of monero uh, and you want to sell it to fiat of course, you have to pay 20% from your income if the value of Bitcoin or value of Monero uh, will go up in the following years. Okay. So the thing is, where to choose the permanent residency? So uh, I recommend you to choose your permanent residency according to the two uh, facts. The first fact is you should prefer the country with a territorial taxation. What does it mean, territorial taxation? It means that you ha in these countries you have an obligation to pay taxes uh, only from your, from your local income, not your for, from, from your foreign income. There are many of such countries like Costa Rica, Gibraltar, Hong Kong, Macau, Malaysia, Nicaragua, Panama, and so on. And also, you should try to choose countries uh, with, with a double treaty agreement with your home country where you want to do business. So for example, if you're a Czech citizen and you have a Czech, uh, you have customer in the Czech Republic, it is good to have uh, residents in Hong Kong, Malaysia, Panama, Singapore. If you're a Slovak citizen, this country are Hong Kong, Malaysia, Singapore. What does it mean? It means that if you're, for example, if you do business in the Czech Republic and you issue the invoice from your Panamanian company to any Czech company, this company can use this invoice as an expense. So you move money to uh, to Panama in Panama. It's zero tax for foreign, uh, um, foreign income, so you basically don't need to pay taxes. So I personally decided for Panama. So at this moment, I'm still European citizen, but resident of Panama. So I decided to give up my residence in, uh, in Europe because of multiple reasons. And the reason why I decided from this like, list of countries just for Panama are because I have a lot of good friends in Panama. I speak Spanish. Also, Slovakia, as well as Germany, they are on the uh, friendly list of Panama. What does it mean? It means that if you are German, for example, or Slovak or Czech, or any European, basically, you are on the friendly list of Panama. And when you ask for your permanent residence in Panama, you can get it for un like for unlimited period. I mean, forever, basically. So. So this is especially, uh, especially good because, for example, if you are from Colombia, Venezuela, Nicaragua, and these countries, and you are asking for Panamanian residency, you get it usually just for two or three years, and then it's really difficult, very handy to renew your uh, permanent residency uh, for another three years. But this is not your case because you are, uh, you are positively discriminated, you are from the friendly list. Also, Panama is, is a territorial taxation country, so you need to pay taxes only from local income. Uh, another cool feature of Panama is that they don't have central bank. By the way, central banks are responsible uh, for 
inflation, a hyperinflation in most Latin American countries, especially Venezuela or, or, uh, or Argentina. So uh, in these countries, you would especially appreciate if there is no central bank. The Panama is a really developed country, not as Germany, but, but the most, one of the most developed countries in the South America, where there is great weather, and also they have special uh, visas for retirement, uh, for retired people. And so it's definitely a great country for digital nomads. Strongly recommend it. Uh, and I'm going to ex explain you also more why, why it's like better country than Estonia, for example. Okay, so this is my Panamanian ID, Cedula. It's called Carne de Residente de Parma. So I, I get it f uh, for 10 years up to 2029. You can see the, uh, the, my blood type, which is B minus. And also that uh, I am donor of or like human organs in case of I, I died, for example. Um, and also I have a, my Panamanian driving license. So the cool thing about, it, uh, about, about Panamanian driving license is that if you have German driving license and you want to ask for English driving or Spanish driving license, you have to give up, you have to return your German uh, driving license. But only in Panama. So now I have two driving licenses. And this is super cool because more driving license, licenses you have, it's, it's better for you because you can still uh, use, you can choose which driving license you want to use in the given country. So, for example, for the next year, we have a new law according to which Slovak police, like traffic police, will be connected with the Slovak tax office. So, for example, if I have, if, if I have any unpaid tax, uh, taxes, for example, we have a special dog tax, for example, like for pet, uh, the traffic police in Slovakia can confiscate me my, my Slovak driving license. But if, if I use like a non-European legal document, which is my Panamanian driving license, they cannot confisc confiscate me this document. And it's super cool because, uh, so, so that's the reason why I use my Panamanian driving license in Europe, and I use my Slovak European driving license in South America. Okay, so some other benefits of having non-permanent residence in the European Union. Uh, the thing is that you, you basically, make some, some kind of legislation firewall. So the thing is that uh, one cool feature of Panama is there is no state postal office, or I mean a functional state postal office. So if German government wants to send you anything, they need to use private courier, like DHL or something like that. And it'll cost maybe 100 euros. So if your local European government wants to send you anything, they need to pay at least one of the, uh, one of the euro. And also, uh, so, 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 for example, in many situations, it, it doesn't make any economical sense to, to send you anything from, uh, from your government to, uh, to Panama. The cool feature is that you can still have two passports. For example, we, Slo we can have, because of Israel, we can have two Slovak passports. So if I want something from my government, I just use two, my, I don't have my Slovak national ID. I just use my uh, Slovak passports and, in, um, and I'm immediately solve any problems if I, need to, if I need to solve any problems. Another cool thing is that changing your residency back to Germany or to Slovakia, to, ho to, to your home EU country is super easy, especially if you have their family and, or you have a company, so, and you're a citizen of Germany or you're a citizen of, of Slovakia. So uh, it's question, in Slovakia it's a question of five euro, I think. Uh, you can change it immediately and after you solve what is necessary, you can change it back and you can give up your residency. Okay, so I was also thinking, uh, considering some alternatives, uh, probably quite a good country, territorial taxation country is Paraguay, but unfortunately I don't know anyone in this country. Another country is Malaysia. Malaysia is cool because Malaysia uh, has double tax treaty agreements with most European countries, but, uh, and there, is, there are also some like a tax paradise which is called Labuan. Uh, it is the special part of Malaysia which has the maximum limit of taxation. taxation. So you pay some percentage from your income, and then when you reach seven, I think it's seven or eight thousand uh, dollars yearly. So when you re when you reach this limit, you don't need to pay anything more. Uh, but the problem is that Malaysia, it is really difficult to get something what is permanent residency, and also uh, it's a dictatorship country. 
like also like Singapore, Dubai, Saudi Arabia. So, so I decided to uh, not. I decided not to consider these countries just because I don't want to support like a, a dictatorship regime. Another interesting country is Nicaragua, but unfortunately now they have some political protests. The Nicaraguan president was shooting, his government was shooting to students, so not very safe environment, political environment. And also Costa Rica, but the problem of Costa Rica is that it's really expensive. I think Costa Rica is even more expensive than Germany probably. So we need, and to have the permanent residence in Costa Rica, you have to buy a property in Costa Rica, which, is, which will cost you 100,000 euros or dollars, and it's really expensive. Okay, so now the question, uh, so now this, I described the, how to choose your permanent residency. Now I'm going to choose how to choose the suitable country for your company. So before you start your company, you should definitely ask, where are your customers? So if you have customer out of, out of the European Union, usually it doesn't make any sense to, to use or to create European company. So in this situation, it's definitely better to use any offshore destination. And if you have customer, I mean, I mean, when you when you're providing some services like programmer IT services, so and if you're a customer in the European Union, I think probably the best option is to uh, to you consider Cyprus, because Cyprus is a European country with the EU also in the eurozone, and they have the least income tax, which is only 12.5 percent, or Estonia, which has 20 20 percent income tax. But what is cool about Estonia, you have an obligation to pay taxes only when you want to withdraw, withdraw uh, money from, uh, from your Estonia company. And another cool thing is that um, if, you, if you have any physical office in, in the given country, and it's almost impossible to prove that the, your like a job, your physical project was done in the given country, uh, it doesn't make sense to have any Slovak, German, any company, and you should definitely move your uh, business to Cyprus or Estonia and avoid like a high taxes and stupid bureaucracy. Okay, so the question is, why should I leave my company from Slovakia, Czech Republic? Um, I think pretty similar reason are in the most European country because you have high taxes and you have uh, mandatory social health care insurance. In Slovakia, we have pretty unstable environment for entrepreneurs so every every election the uh, like enter, like business or company laws are changed we have a lot of privacy dangerous law so i don't recommend to use uh, to to do business in these countries okay and one important information is that i mentioned to you that when you give up your permanent residence in germany for example it does not need to be enough when you don't want to pay taxes in Germany. Because despite this fact, if you spend more than half year in, in Germany, you still have an obligation to pay taxes in, uh, in Germany. And, all, and even if you don't spend in Germany more than half year, and you have something what is called center of your interest in your home country, you still have an obligation to pay taxes in, uh, in Germany. So what is necessary to to do to eliminate the center of your interest in your, in your country. So firstly, you should give up your permanent residency. You should leave up official job. So, so the, the whole hack I'm describing here is just for company owners. You cannot be employed in any corporation. This is pretty uh, necessary to say. You have to change it together with your wife or your husband. So if your wife or your husband does not, does not want to change uh, his permanent residency to Panama, for example, you should, try to, you should divorce. Because otherwise, your husband uh, or wife will be like a security privacy risk, you know, center of your interest. You should sell all your properties. But the cool thing is that when you want, uh, in case of Panamian residency, uh, you need to create Panamian companies so you can sell your German property, German flat, or German house to your Panamian, Panamian company. Uh, so also, if you have German company or any company, you should sell it to your Panamian company. You should become perpetual traveler, which means you shouldn't stay in any country more than half a year, because if you stay in any country more than half a year, you have an obligation, according to the international agreement, to have tax residency in the given country. And you should become the homeless with no obligations. Close your bank accounts. Using bank accounts is very sensitive. For example, I stopped using my bank accounts maybe five years ago. 
I completely switched to cryptocurrencies, and I do not consider Bitcoin to be like a like a trusted, safe cryptocurrency. So I switched to Monero. I'm the Monero guy. So you should be you should be also aware that if you use bank accounts, your uh, bank, your Visa or Mastercard company, government, basically they know everything about you. About you, uh, so you have no pr no financial privacy at all. So uh, and if it is not possible to close all your, all your bank accounts, usually you can survive with these like, virtual uh, cards like a Revolut or N26. So this is the I also have a separate presentation how it is possible to completely uh, switch from the traditional bank accounts to cryptocurrencies. There is a link, and also you should be aware there is no country in the world. Uh, with the bank secrecy anymore, you know, so there is no country where you can open the bank account and it'll be like a secret, no country. The only thing if you want to survive is just to switch to truly anonymous cryptocurrencies. Okay, so uh, as I already uh, said, I recommend you to use Monero for anonymous savings. So if you need to pay for anything, uh, there is a great service which is called XMR.2. Uh, you can pay all your expenses in Bitcoin. Also, there is a great service which is called Lamium.io. Do you know Lamium? Lamium is super cool. It's a way uh, how to pay all your invoices in Europe Union, German invoices, for example, without KYC and without uh, AML. So, and it, it doesn't even support registration. So, you just upload your invoice in Germany. German invoice you need to pay. You send crypto. And there is a pool, decentralized pool of payers, and some guy just accept your Bitcoin and he will pay it from his personal bank account. So for example, what you can do, uh, and you, you don't have a bank account, you can, you can delegate all, all payments of your own invoices to random, peop random people. Uh, there are also, you can use also Bitcoin debit cards like Bitfor or Varex. Unfortunately, it's not possible to uh, get this uh, card in an anonymous way, so you have to provide uh, to do KYC ML if you if you want to ask for Bitcoin debit cards, for example in Prague, like Prague is one of one of my home city, there is there are like a 176 places where you can use crypto. The biggest e-shop in Czech Republic is called Alza.cz. Alza is like like Czech Amazon. They they sell basically absolutely everything, and they accept crypto. So 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 you can easily order. From your computer to toilet, pa to toilet paper from from Alza.cz, and also the biggest food delivery uh, chain, which is called uh, Dame Idlo in Prague, they also accept crypto. Uh, so th when you when you when you were when you were able to order anything with a crypto, and when you were, when you were able to order the food with a crypto, you basically don't need to use any bank account. And and still, um, if you have a company and you don't want uh, to use uh, use uh, bank accounts, what you can do, uh, you can register your company, for example, to simplecoin.eu, which is basically SEPA gateway. So if you receive any invoice in fiat, you can easily pay this invoice by your company. And so so basically, as a company, you don't need a bank account, which is super cool. Okay. Also, you should be aware that uh, if you use official cryptocurrencies, I mean centralized cryptocurrencies, you have to follow KYC ML. Uh, so if you don't like this KYC AML uh, regulation, you should use decentralized crypto exchanges like Bisco or Hodl Hodl. Choose your global healthcare insurance. This is super cool. So uh, if you are in Germany, you you have to be customer of all of the oligopoly of few healthcare insurance uh, providers. But when you uh, when you give up, uh, you can choose from the global market. So there are a lot of players like Cigna. Allianz, for example, uh, I, me personally, I, I paid very cheap healthcare insurance, which is called uh, uh, um, Safety Wing, and, it, and it's global, except of the U.S. and it works in very easy way. So basically, I pay everything in cash. Uh, when I visit any medical doctor in any country, I just take the receipt, I scan this receipt, send it to email to my uh, healthcare insurance company, and they just send me money back so this is super cool also is that when you are willing to be global and flexible you can save a lot of money so for example many perpetual travelers they know that 
in Hungary or in Colombia, there are the cheapest and the best dentists. If you want to do like eye surgery, the best country and the cheapest country is Czech Republic. So depending what kind of medi uh, like medical problem you have, you can, uh, you, you can visit specific countries. Also choose your uh, mobile operator. So there are like a many global, global mobile operators you are probably not aware of. Uh, despite the fact that I, I'm not a big fan of Google, I decided to use the project which is the best and it's called Google Project Fi. So what I have now, I have unlimited data for $45 in all, Euro, in all countries of the world. So basically, I, I travel a lot, and I, and, yeah, I visit any countries, Asia, Africa, uh, South America, uh, US. I don't need to pay any money for roaming. So I have like unlimited data in all countries, which is super cool. Uh, you don't need to trust Google, because what you can do, you can, you can make like VPN connection, use encrypted communication. So basically, Google uh, will not know any sensitive information about, about your communication. And the cool thing is that uh, Google does not want to know your identity. So if you can, you can, you can activate this Google Fi, uh, just downloading your eSIM. You just need to find a way how to pay, um, how to pay the invoice to Google. So basically, they, they don't, they don't care about your ID. They just need your money. Okay. Fine. Uh, also, there is another cool service we just call Hush.com. Is the service uh, using this service you can find uh, you can you can buy a phone number basically in any country, uh, uh, and it's you can you can use this service in a completely anonymous way. You can you can buy it, uh, using bitcoins, and you can buy like U.S. or Canadian number. Uh, you can use this number for SMS text messaging, for receiving messages, for uh, making calls. And the cool thing the cool thing is that when you use like cloning application like Duplex or Dual Space Bit or Hashcom. You basically can create your new anonymous signal identity, WhatsApp identity, I don't know, messenger identity. So you can create on your on one phone the alternative identity, messenger identity. Also, um, when you travel a lot, you should embrace sharing economy. So there are a lot, uh, there are special global working places. One of, one is called Regus.com or Vwork.com. And uh, so basically, you pay some monthly subscription, and you, you in all biggest city of the world, uh, you can go and visit these cities for uh, for office. You have practically everything what you, what you need in your office. There are also global temporary car rental companies. Uh, probably in Germany, you know, car to go or drive now. Uh, we have also similar one, car for way in Prague, upstate in Bratislava, bike sharing system. Last time I visited Berlin, I registered in 10 different bike sharing uh, systems, which is super cool. And every time when you visit some country, you should definitely check possibilities of the local sharing economy. Okay. And, and the last uh, important thing is that if you are so lucky and, and you are able to opt out of the system, and you really like it, you should try help your friends to follow you. And also try to opt out of the system and move to parallel society. Because um, I'm more than sure that thanks to these opt out advices, you can achieve more freedom than, than traditional voting, for example, trying to change your system or political system. Uh, because, for example, in Slovakia, we are totally skeptical. We don't believe in any political change. So, if you want to be, uh, if you want to have more freedom, you should definitely try to opt out of the system and embrace the global possibilities of all countries. So, being flexible and the global at the same time, you can achieve new kind of freedom. But may, you can maybe you can say, "Oh, this is really complex and really difficult. Should I?" Do it, and there is a quote from the the uh, Greek poet: "The secret to happiness is freedom, and the secret to uh, freedom is your courage." So I definitely recommend you to do that. Impress the new digital world with the no borders, and become your new new rich. I'm not sure if you know the term "new rich." Okay. 
So basically, new rich means that new rich people are not people who have a lot of money, but they have to visit corporation and work since 8 a.m. until uh, 6 p.m. or 4 p.m. The new, new rich people are people who are willing to move and who have a free time. So if you are, if you are portable and you are able to work from any, any part of the world and you have a time, you are definitely new rich. So thanks a lot for your attention. No time. Okay. So no time for questions. Yeah, sorry, no time for questions. I know if you guys if you guys do have questions though, Wilder is going to be over here off stage. You can go ahead and swarm him, give him a, a bunch of groupies around him so he can feel very special.